Hi, my name is Brendan Mooney and I will be dis discussing the importance of a flex fuel mandate for our country and how such could relieve the U.S. of its dependence on foreign oil. I have synthesized some of my arguments from Robert Zubrin's book, Energy Victory. Saudi Arabia is by far the largest recipient of international oil revenues, as large as the next four OPEC members combined. OPEC is basically led and controlled by the Saudis because they have the ability to punish other OPEC players by expanding production to crash the price. Now, simply boycotting the purchasing of oil will not reduce the price of oil. If the oil price is allowed to soar high enough to induce conservation, OPEC wins everything. Zubrin's main point is that conservation fails, but substitution works. So it is imperative that the world switches to some other fuel in order to destroy OPEC and preserve the natural environment before it's too late. In order to convert any type of biomass into methanol, the same basic process is used. Through steam reformation, carbon reacts with water and coal, methane, and biomasses to form a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, otherwise known as syngas. This is accomplished through the water gas shift reaction. Reacting carbon monoxide and hydrogen together then creates methanol. The same strategy can be converted to any type of, or can be used to convert any type of trash and or composed of compounds of car carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen with some impurities to synthesis gas and then methanol. It has been calculated that about 4 billion tons of agricultural crop residues are produced worldwide every year, uh, with a total energy content equivalent to 1.5 billion tons of oil per year, or 28 million barrels per day. If it were all converted to methanol, this source alone would be enough to replace the combined oil exports of all OPEC. Ethanol, on the other hand, has about two-thirds the power density of a gallon of gasoline, and in recent years, it has been based heavily on the conversion of corn. However, only limited fractions of the plant that farmers grow are actually sold as commercial crops. Uh, large quantities of the vegetable, such as the stems, roots, and leaves, are left to waste. So the issue is that these parts of the plant aren't able to be converted to, cell or to methanol because they're made of cellulose. But Currently, ex extensive research is being done uh, in order to make this conversion large scale. Now, the grazing animals that are able to break down cellulose in their stomach have certain enzymes, and once uh, humans can invent a microorganism that can transform cellulose into fermentable starch or sugar, humans could even convert the discarded leaves of autumn into ethanol. Now, one of the most controversial topics of our of our generation is the presence of climate change. Alcohol fuels burn cleaner than gasoline, they cause less pollution, and they are less toxic. Neither ethanol or methanol are carcinogenic. Many materials that are often viewed as waste, such as sawdust and rice bran, are actually sources of biomass as well. Um, furthermore, both ethanol and methanol are soluble in water and biodegradable. There would be no permanent consequences from a major oil, oil tanker spill like the Exxon Valdez. Uh, alcohol fuels also act as a counter to global warming because plant material draws its CO2 from the atmosphere. Not only that, but plants cool the earth by evaporation of water through their leaves. And in fact, corn returns more moisture to the atmosphere than it withdraws from ground and surface water for irrigation. Now, according to Zubrin, by switching to alcohol, we could quadruple our purchases of third world agricultural goods while giving U.S. farmers substantially more business, not less. While most foreign aid uh, given to third world countries' governments is typically stolen by the gangsters that rule them, the money would actually go straight to the productive sectors of the poor nation's economy, completely avoiding any corruption. In 2007, Saudi Arabia, with 24 million people, received $240 billion from oil exports. Simultaneously, Kenya, with 36 million people, earned $3 billion in foreign exchanges from all sources. Now, Zubrin believes if distributed elsewhere, Saudi oil profits could double the foreign exchange of 80 countries like Kenya. Now, the best way f to introduce an initiative for alcohol fuels would be the U.S. government setting a mandate that all new cars sold are to be flex fueled. As of now, high alcohol fuel pumps are, are rare and only 7% of all the cars on the road are actually flex fuel uh, compatible. Um, but if a mandate were set in place, E85, E85 and M85 pumps would start showing up all around the world and the country and 
Although efforts have been made in California, it still has not been effective nationwide. So that is why a flex fuel mandate is imperative to re relieve ourselves of our dependence on foreign oil. Thank you.